The corporations have not yet won. Community still exists in small, tucked-away areas not often talked about. Artists and businesses beginning to thrive in places thought to be defeated. Dave, I like to call him David Francis. And I, Tom Maslowski, are here to give you a glimpse of what's going on in J-Town. We're going to be interviewing all of our favorite musicians, artists, and business owners that give every ounce of themselves into what they do. And you guessed it. Tonight's guest is Mr. Ellis Wright on the saxophone. How's it going, Ellis? Hey, how's it going, everyone? Pretty good. And uh, we picked up a straggler downstairs. We found Alex Hoffer roaming the streets of the of this downtown city of Joliet. I tend to do that. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> and so uh, he's going to be uh, randomly guest hosting with us this evening. Thanks Hello, for Alex. Me. Pretty straight you have me Alex? tonight. It's good to be here. Good Alex? to be here in the. Uh, it's good to be here in the studio with you, uh, you guys. We were just talking about how we like to hear the sound of our voice and headphones, and we discovered this awesome sound. And even though he's not participating, Dave Francis is here with us again this evening. I threw an off-key high note up in there. That was you doing the high? Yeah, that was him. That was pretty. I mean, um, and thank you, Dave, for contributing to our our new song. You are quite welcome, sir. I was being very, very entertained, and uh, you probably don't realize that we actually opened the show with it. Oh, that's the best thing that's ever happened. To me, I, I believe the name of that tune is going to be called "Monk on a Monks on a Mountain." Yes, mountain, mountain, mountain. No, it mm. has to be mountain, mountain with tequila. Uh, mm. Monks on a mountain. Monks That's... on a trek to find tequila on a mountain. Ah, I love that one. There we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, and so you know what? We got to be serious here. This is supposed to be a serious show. We're getting down to business here, and uh, I'm not going to take any trash from either of you two this evening. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just preparing I for highly. actually being ridiculed the entire show. Somebody call waste management. You guys can't see Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Ellis, would you like to get to your first song for us? Sure. <laughs> Ellis? awesome thank you thank you you know that was really interesting to hear i can hear all the work that you're doing like the things that you don't hear when when you're out in the audience and you're playing your thing on stage like i can hear you 
fingering all the valves. I can hear like the breath that you're pushing through all of it. That was really interesting. But saxophone has keys, not valves. I also noticed so it sounds like almost like key valves. If you hear like a like maybe an opera singer going, ah, yeah, like or oh, vibrato, the, the vibrato yeah, of, yeah. The, of the whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, yeah. All, all same, I'm saying same is, exact. Uh, Principle. It's, sure. a, it's just yeah. this that's Mike Place. Yeah. You don't normally hear that. <laughs> that's though. killer Mike Place. Uh, you just don't normally hear that. <laughs> it is. Um, Thanks, man. It's also yeah, really man. quiet in here too, which helps with that too. Yeah. But, uh, right. yeah. but that's that's the idea. I wanted to capture that stuff. You know, I don't mic saxophones head on. That's right. That's a, he's actually got yeah, a shirt like the that first says that. He's got a shirt I, I, and a bumper I sticker. Dealt with like <laughs> koozie. Yeah. Really? It works out. Yeah. Seriously, you're the first. Everybody else is put it close to the bell. No, I don't, you, I don't I think horns. Off the bell, so. I did ask him that earlier too, actually. Yeah. I don't think horns should swallow microphones, man. You got to let them populate the air. You got to let those those uh, harmonics, you know, gather before it hits the microphone. You're a smart man. It was just cool too Good because to what I do. <laughs> you don't realize. Yeah, no, seriously, like that, that's cool because it is cool. We recorded a couple things already, mm -hmm. and you've done that, you know, with the uh, me just playing off to the side instead of playing, you know, the bell. And now, what you are know. you talking about there, Ellis? Is that maybe some big lanyette, perhaps? <laughs> Conversations oh, oh, we're having oh. there? I'm glad you asked. The way you, the way you looked at him was priceless. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, with big lanyette, we did that. Uh, when was that, Dave? This past fall? It was, like, yeah, like late winter, fall, early, early winter. Yeah, in, early we got like winter. three yeah. tracks that we've been putting out and sharing around. There we go. Um, that, and then we just did a movie, Tom. Yeah, uh, we just oh, did yeah, a soundtrack. Yeah, right, right, yeah, so, the soundtrack. Yeah. That was the most recent thing we've we've done in collab down and that was a lot of fun that, that was, was really cool that was an awesome experience you know playing along with a a movie you know instead of just playing two people you're playing it's, it's a you're playing with the musicians and you you have eye contact and you're playing along but you also have a screen watching the film and you're playing mm -hmm. through the emotions of that you're that gonna, was really cool is it like that was really uh, cool is there's i'm sure there's got to be something unique about being able to visualize sort of what it is that you're hearing right. or what it is that you're, you know, you're going about, you're about to be hearing as you're playing. Oh, exactly. You're so you, you've got these notes and these, these, I'm assuming you had sheet music maybe for this. No, like, oh. no, no. This was all just. Well, that was, I was just going to, I was going to bring <laughs> okay. that up next was that our chart actually was what you said was we had to establish what we thought what we thought sense. the scene was supposed to sound like sure. and what, you know, what those activities should sound like. And right. We so um I don't know if we talked about this in a different episode or not, but the the chart was literally um D minor main theme and then it said C major innocence. <laughs> yes, D seven, yes. you know, blue monk drug funk. Because like, <laughs> yeah. it was supposed to be about like junkies. You know, we had all these crazy like it, it, goofy names, it, you know. It seems you know, I guess it just it's unique because you, typically when you're writing something, you're having to visualize or if you are visualizing, you're visualizing something out of your head. It's totally free form out of your head uh, that you that you're thinking of, or somebody else told you about what they thought of, and you're still d making it up in your mind right. how you're viewing it. But now you've got a, everybody's got the same visual thing to lock onto, and I imagine um, the chemistry you can do with a group of people like that when everybody's seeing exactly the same visualization to kind of latch onto has got to be an interesting. Kind of oh experience. man, yeah, it was definitely, a lot of definitely. fun. It was it was all about the team effort, and it was all about. It had, it had nothing to do with anybody, I mean, any of the musicians in the room. We were trying to create this thing that this person requested. They said, hey, we want this kind of feel. And after a few tries of it with different musicians, um, the director had all kinds of notes and things he wanted to change and stuff like that. And uh, to do it that way, we, we thought it was going to be a lot harder, but it ended up being quite a bit of fun. And uh, I really enjoyed working with you, Ellis. And, Thank you. Thank I mean, you. it was likewise, great that you likewise. made time because... I know and a lot like Alex, you know, a lot like most of us, I guess, you're in many projects. You're playing all the time. You have a day awesome job. Awesome segue, man. Yeah. Awesome segue. <laughs> um, can, you, can you rattle off some of the bands? Give us the complete list of all the projects that you work in. Okay. How long is this podcast? No, <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, Big Land Yap, The Select Tones, um, Freak Easy, our own project. Mm -hmm. You know, working on some jazz stuff. Um. Uh, John Conjman, of course, in OGO, O Gang Orchestra. Um, myself, you know, playing in the streets sometimes, you know, so trying to get that going this summer, you know, <laughs> do a little street performing. So Yeah, that'd be great. You know, I'd, I'd love to sit outside uh, by the fountain. Just and play the four-star? Exactly. I know we've talked about that the yeah. other day, yeah. 
you know, doing a little bit of street performing out here, out outside Chicago Street here. You know, so, so many different, so many good opportunities for the when the people are just down here, exactly. anyways, too, for that to make sense. Exactly. Particularly that was summer coming up too. But right, you know. right. And how did you find your way down here? How did you? Because I mean, you're not. I mean, it's, it's been a couple of years now, but you're a relatively new <laughs> face to Chicago Street. How did you find your way here? Um, I used to stop. Oh, I, I was uh, how can I put it? <laughs> I'm just trying to like backtrack the whole story. Make a short story long. <laughs> okay, but yeah, long story. <laughs> yeah. yeah, long story short. Yeah, right. Um, well, me and Hoffer used to jam back in the day. Bedrocks. Bedrocks. Wednesday well, nights. Before that, Bedrocks. even before that. City was that Champs. before that? Uh, was before that? City right. Champs. So yeah. I met that was like six, seven years ago. Almost. Exactly. I met him at Maybe City Champions. That. Yeah, I think it was yeah. seven. I think it was seven, seven years ago. There. Yeah. 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 Was, I mean, we used to jam out there, and at the time, I was going to Jolly Junior College for uh, music and you know, learning, you know, on paper and on the, on the chalkboard how to play music and then going out to the jams with Hoffer and such, Bedrock, City of Champs, and so forth, learning how to do it by ear and by feeling. So it was, it was a cool, like, opportunity for me, like, to kind of put what I was learning in the classroom to practice. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so, so I was getting the theory and that, all that, and understanding that, and then putting all that to practice under my fingers and in my head and in my heart and such. Yeah, that's so you know, important. I, I, I really do think that you need both. Exactly. I mean, you, you can exactly. do one or the other, but when you do both, it's kind of sort of especially if, if your intention, which obviously is yours, is to play, is to perform out yes. as well yes. too. Exactly. You know, if you want to just learn music and just be at home and do it for you, that's one thing too. But if your intention is to perform, being able to put yourself in a in a different, being on stage is different than being in a classroom or being at home learning something obviously right you know everything there's a everything you have to work with other people you have to be conscientious and you have to listen and you have to you know you have to kind of know your stuff and enough to play along with what's going on especially if you don't know the songs which is i mean that was kind of our shtick for a while around here it sounds like a whole thing yeah Yeah. (laughs) well i mean that was you know that's um I think a lot of the fun about playing, and that's why I think music is called a language. Well, you want to sound. You want to sound like you want to sound. You want to sound good for you, and you want to sound good for the people that you know are listening to you too. Yeah, yeah they have to yeah. sit there and listen all night long. You know, right, right. Right. <laughs> open mic night can be brutal if no one knows what they're doing. Right? Ah, uh, yeah, I've been to those. <laughs> now you said JJC was was music your major? Is that something? Yes, that you? yes. So uh, music performance was my major. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, did the theory thing and everything, and. Uh, Got the associates. So did you really? Woohoo! Woo-hoo, yeah. <laughs> now, have, so you. So when did you start playing music? Was it always saxophone? No, it wasn't. Uh, I started on B flat clarinet, which is very similar to saxophone, similar fingerings. You know, so it's part of the woodwind family and all that. Um, this was back in fourth grade. Started on clarinet. Wanted to play saxophone, but they told me I had to start on clarinet. So I was like, so Is it be easier it. to play a clarinet? Um, me personally, I think no. I read the place a saxophone. It seemed, it seemed like it's more free blowing, you know, opposed to what a clarinet. What do you mean by that? Can you go elaborate? Um, it's easier to play, basically. <laughs> what do you mean free blowing? Like it just makes more sense? Less no, no, no. It's, just, it's easier. Flow. I'm sorry. Same idea of free balling. Less restrictions. <laughs> he's, he's free balling. Less free restrictions balling. on the airflow. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But it's just yeah, exactly. It's 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 like uh, so the analogy say, like blowing to a straw. Opposed to blowing into um, what's those uh, a cocktail tubes. straw? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there no we go. Straw. <laughs> a straw is a saxophone, and a cocktail straw is a clarinet. Yeah, well, it, and a, know, clarinet, a, little... a clarinet, if I'm not mistaken, either is a, more of a classical instrument too, obviously, than a right, saxophone right. too. For right. the most part, yes, it, it's it's older. It's, got a it's an older. Sound. It's been around longer. Yes, right? yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. Good talk, guys. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but <laughs> so how old were you when you started? You said uh, uh, fourth grade. Okay. Fourth grade, fourth, fifth grade, the clarinet. Then uh, junior high, I started experimenting. Uh, they needed a bass clarinet. Where'd you go to school at? Went to Dirksen. Okay. Dirksen Junior High and then West. Oh, so yeah. you're, you've been around? Oh, here. yeah, I'm oh, a Jolly guy. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. I'm a, I'm a Jolly guy. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, sixth, seventh grade, I was playing Barry Sax, bass clarinet. Love baritone. You know, a little bit of tenor. You know, yeah, I love, oh, man, that's Sounds so good. that's home right there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Working on getting one, you know. I'm trying to, trying to hunt one down, but. 
And see, cheers to you because (laughs) starting starting that young, playing music like that, you end up having to play hot cross buns and all this goofy stuff. (laughs) And it's it's pretty hard to stick with it. I should have played that for my song instead. (laughs) You know know what's funny? (laughs) The first instrument I ever learned, the only instrument I actually ever learned uh, how to read music on was a tenor saxophone. Oh, really? When I was in sixth or seventh grade. Um and I got a piano first, but then I got a... Uh, well, you didn't was, mention any of that in the interview. Thanks a lot, man. Withholding no. evidence. I didn't this think about crazy. it. I didn't think about it. But I think I may have even mentioned that to you back when we first met. Right, but, right. Uh, that was something I loved. I loved... And the other two, you know, talking about... How we've known each other for like seven years or whatever now. And seeing you go from picking it up and learning how to play it to now being able to utilize it in several different projects has been really cool. Yeah. Because I've now... I've watched sort of I've seen you get really good at what you're doing you know thank you, thank you. and it's always cool to see some of you know and you like like watching your baby grow up uh, <laughs> succeed at, you know well no i know what means, so it is cool because my little baby, a lot of people baby. get discouraged or, I mean, well it's easy to get discouraged it's just good to see your friends succeed at things they want to do you know and that's yeah. that's exactly the, the, yeah and you're all over the place now you play Oh, I forgot about Cali Groove. Sorry, yeah, Cali <laughs> oh, Groove. Trouble, man. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> what about Five Star? Don't you five play four star? star? Yeah, I played Five Star for uh, four, four Star. Sorry, I'm See? totally. I'm Five Star's coming up though. Six five Star, star Six Star, coming star coming soon. <laughs> they just need one you. more positive rating. <laughs> 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 no, one, there, are, there are one dick on Yelp just. Is <laughs> yeah, he just keeps coming back. Yeah, Four Star is a brass band out of Chicago, uh, New Orleans style music, Dixieland and stuff like that. Real fun guys to play with. It's like a billion of them in the band. You so, seem to be involved yeah. in a lot of projects that tip that uh, hit like funk and like New Orleans style standards. Uh, like yeah, two. Thing, or is that just what you fell into? The two. No, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Uh, two. yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, no, I, I do. No, no, I, some, I, like, I classic funk songs and stuff. It's, yeah, I, I love funk. I love all types of music. Like, I can't. I think that's that's why it's hard for me to just to nail myself down, you know, into <laughs> one style of music. Because um, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up listening to the Miles Davis, Birth of the Cool. My dad was playing that. My mom was in the Grover, Washington. You know, my sisters would listen to Green Day. You know, so like it was like, you know, and then I was listening to everything else in between there. You know, so it was, it was a lot of stuff going on throughout the house as far as music. You know, so, who all in your family plays? Um, you said your just dad me. played. Well, no, no, my dad was just everybody in my family's music enthusiast. But my uh, my dad never played. My mom never played. Um, my youngest sister Ellen, she played clarinet. It's pretty good. Doesn't play anymore. My oldest sister, Ozina, played flute. She doesn't play anymore either. So I'm kind of like the only one kind of keeping it going, so so to say. So, yeah. Now, was that something that your your parents were like, hey, you guys got to try an instrument? Or was it something that all of you just wanted to do? Um, I think it was ca- kind of both. Like, um, like, oh, yeah, hey, I want to play. Like, oh, yeah, sure. Okay, just get you into that then. Wait, was know? it maybe like a suggestion that you all decided that seemed like a good idea? Like what, what? How do you feel about a musical instrument? You know, yeah, let's try it. Was it something like that, or is it more you kind of just happened because you everybody liked music and it was just? I like think a I think it was yeah. I think it was more the latter there. Like I, I think it just kind of kind of flowed that way. Like I can't remember exactly if it was like you know my dad was like oh, go play clarinet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know. So and how did you but, all gravitate towards those kinds of instruments? Like no one played guitar or drums or piano. I don't know. I, I honestly I couldn't tell you, man. Like That's it was just how it went. Yeah, just just how how. Things fell into place. How the cards fell, man. Yeah. Like I said, clarinet and then bass clarinet, contra bass clarinet, which is a huge. Nice. What is, can yeah, you describe what that is? That's that's like a, a um, clarinet on. on, on <laughs> yeah. I've seen one. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's on steroids, man. It's a clarinet <laughs> on steroids. Bass clarinet on steroids. It's humongous. I mean, it's like me sitting here on the stool right now would probably be, since I'm shorter, would probably be just right for me to play it. What? Yeah, it's huge. Do people use stands like use like floor stands for them? Like other um, I, I didn't because people it was do so though, big. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like like Tom, you probably would because you're a taller guy. You know, you too. You know, but um, probably basically everyone except me because I'm short. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, but yeah, like, I didn't use a stand or anything. But it was a, it's a huge instrument. You know, so I I I don't know for some reason I gravitated toward all the low woodwinds. You know, like I just love the sounds. The Barry sax. I never played the bass sax. Tenor sax, bass clarinet. Wait, there's Probably because that deep ass voice of yours. You're just maybe yeah, I, it's that. I think you're onto something, dude. I find that sometimes, <laughs> like the you know, the lower stuff tends to 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 facilitate more rhythmics. Rhythmic. You know, oh, right, I mean, right, like, right. I mean, like you can do a lot of other things with it, obviously. But first off, in concert band, it usually goes toward like 
the longer tones, yeah, the bass yeah, notes, it's the foundation. Bump, and the, bump, the, yeah. the when you do triplets or or you know quick notes, they they tend to almost feel like waves as opposed right. to like like. like needles right you know? or usually the flutes and the clarinets and yeah. trumpets are playing that yeah well there's yeah. all that sound with one note you don't have to play chords or multiple notes at the exactly you play one note it's got all this huge which sound. you should know because you play bass guitar so yeah. like it kind of falls uh, sort of in the same idea frame i guess and I, I think it's it's interesting there's obviously you know every there's a lot of you know multi-instrumentalists but I, I really feel that people have like their like their spirit instrument, you know, sure. like oh, the, yeah. it, it yeah. fits their personality. You know, like keyboard players are all the same. Bass players, and it, we're all, we all have that mentality and that's why right. we- The personality we go those, that goes along with it. Well, yeah, right, it's right, really, right. really cool. And I, I try <laughs> to tell this stuff to parents when I'm teaching. Like, you know, I just don't think that your son is a guitar player. Like, well, you know what? He bought this thing and he's going to have to play it. Like, I, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I right? know what you mean, but I think he really hates coming here. And I think that he wants to play drums really bad. Can you please? I think at the play? very least, people have a, uh, you know, like a an octave or a, or a range a, or a range wavelength that they feel yeah. very comfortable and feel very natural. Yeah. And it's, maybe it happens to be a guitar, but you can play a baritone guitar too. You can play a... Yeah. classical guitar right you know you can even if somebody picks up a piano they could probably feel really comfortable on the right guitar if they were it was tuned right or if it was the right style of guitar or, or no whatever. for sure but i i still say I know what you're saying though totally but you gotta you gotta find like that one instrument first that kind of unlocks the secret sure. to music and then you can go and try other things but i mean even though i do play other instruments i'm definitely a bass player yeah, if, i'm much better as a bass player i think there's a, there's a, a the mentality difference between rhythmic people and melodic people yeah. some things feel just more natural in your hands or in your for you, like a, on your fingers in your mouth, right. or in your fingertips, or whatever it may be, and then from there you can expand on that. But feeling comfortable at first is probably the key to getting yeah uh, farther into it, right? You know? And then I think it's interesting then because then you get to go back to your home instrument, and you know what the other musicians are thinking about or what they need, you know. Because I was, I get yelled at a lot for being too busy of a bass player, and you know, and that was like. I used to play a lot of chords and a lot of notes. And one of my friends, uh, this guy, Mike Murphy, was like, hey, you know, man, there's a um, there's an instrument they made uh, to play chords on. Like, <laughs> if you want to play chords, you could just, you know, play that instrument. And then when it's time to play bass, you can, like, just play bass. <laughs> and, and seriously, it was the best advice I ever got. And um, when I did go and play all those other instruments and you come back to playing bass, then I, I feel like you're automatically going to be a better musician because you are more... Uh, conscientious you're more aware of what the other instruments like how they have fun like man that guy would have a lot more fun soloing right. if i kept playing the same bass line if you're if, if you're you know, aware of what you really should be doing and by that you become aware of that by listening to whatever else need it right. is doing you, what your what your necessity is is facilitated by what is going on around you yeah you and I, I think you get not a what really you want to do necessarily well, of course but i think it's hard to well for me, it was hard to get a clear picture of that only being a bass player. I didn't really understand what it was like to do all these other things and why people were getting so frustrated with me. Like because I was I was getting in their way. I wasn't letting them do what they do, like what their instrument's purpose was. You yeah. know, I wasn't using my purpose. And um so I just I think it's interesting that you never ever played anything else I besides mean, like wind instruments. And I've never, never played, played a anything else. Instrument. What's that? String instrument. Never played a corded. Uh, well, I, I have a, yeah, I mean, a piano to be, to at be home. To be fair, and... though, there are only really technically three kinds of instruments: there are percussion sure. instruments, string instruments, and wind instruments. Right, right. Whether they be brass or they be woodwind, I mean, they're still you're using air yeah. to blow through something and vibrate. The brass wind, but that's and what the I mean. Wind. Never yeah. really ventured yeah. out. There's two into types those. of the wind. Those, those. Yeah, off, I mean, yeah. but the the the, the physical structure oh, of how right, you make right. the sound out of it. There's three categories essentially. Even, even a piano is still a string instrument, technically. So, yeah, but, you know. but it is a percussion. Instrument. Piano is a percussion. Instrument. It's both. It's both, but it uses it strings. It uses strings though to create yeah, to create notes. It, but it uses yeah. hammers. You're a hammer. You, your fingers are hammers on a guitar, though. <laughs> technically, if you want to get really technical, oh. your fingers do exactly the same <laughs> thing as the hammers. Do. Guys, don't fight. <laughs> I had like three jokes lined up for Dave with the hammer thing, and I just kind of went the other way. I was, <laughs> I, yeah, of, I'm from Wilmington. So, <laughs> Ellis. Oh, oh, here we go. No, <laughs> don't. This is why they call him David. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Wilmington Dave. <laughs> and you know, I did. You know, so how, how did you end up going into the military? How did you go from being a music major and going to school from that, and then I uh. I was in ROTC, and I was in band, you know, same time, you know, throughout high school. And I loved both. I loved the military, you know, I was becoming an enthusiast as far as that. And I obviously loved the music and then such, you know, but uh, 
I decided to go into the military. You know, I really wanted to become a Navy SEAL, of all things. Didn't even know how to swim. <laughs> Didn't even know how to swim. Oh, that's I, so I taught awesome. I taught myself how to swim when I was in the military. And uh, that never really happened. And uh, the music thing kind of came back. It was weird. Like, cause Were you playing in the service? I did. Uh, my dad bought me a horn. I was three years in Norfolk, Virginia, and then three years out in uh, Italy. Uh, it was right, I think it was, yeah, it was right before I went off to Italy. Like that, I left like in November. It was like October. You know, we did like an early Christmas. And he got me a saxophone, the black one that you, yeah, you saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the got, gold, with the gold. Yeah, gold, bells, gold, uh, or, yep, or, yeah, yeah, gold keys and stuff. Or, such. yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, he got me that one. I was like, oh, hell yeah. You know, I got a saxophone now. Huh? Even before that, like a couple months before that, I was renting a saxophone uh, in Norfolk, trying to just, you know, play around. You know, I thought of it more of just like a, a, a slight hobby, so to say, you know, like I play it here and there, you know. Probably was nice not, to not pass gig the time a little bit too while you, when you had downtime. Oh, exactly. exactly and I'm sorry, you know? about how old but, were you when they came back around, you said? He was, um, he was in the military. So yeah, I was, in, I was in the military. So I was, oh, I was probably like, what? 23? Mm, nine, no, 19, oh, was 20. Fuck, was that long ago? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was, like, I was like 22. Wait, how old are you now? I, I'm 32. Oh, you're my age. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you were in the military right at the same time I met you, basically. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. I, got, just, I was out. Just getting out. Well, I, I, yeah, I just got out. Okay. Yeah, okay, so yeah. it was like, what, 2008, 2009-ish? Yeah, right. Nine, nine. Um, yeah, I was out by a year. Got January 2008. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, though I wouldn't have seen you so often. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so no. your, your dad got you what now? Got me a, got me a saxophone. Got me a, he got me a tenor sax and... I was used to playing Barry Sax and bass clearing that, but he got me this, and so I was getting used to a different voice, so to say, you know. But um, I loved it, you know. Nonetheless, still do. Um, yeah, and you know, I took it with me. I same thing. I kind of played it here and there, you know. It's still like a, a, a little bit of a hobby. And then when I was in Italy, I was I was going to change my job from master at arms, which is military police, to musician, you know, musician's mate, whatever you want to call it. Um to be part of the military band, the Navy band and okay. such, you know, but I was like, you know what? I want to get out. I had this pipe dream of I'll get out the Navy and I'll just walk with my horn down Chicago in Chicago and somehow see my horn. Hey, I got a gig for you. you know? Like it's like 1940 or something like that. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, like I don't know. You know? Listen, listen here, kid. Yeah, I, listen, I got yeah. something for you. Yeah. It's a yeah. on the street. Yeah. It's called Earl's. And we're going to give you 20 nickels a night. It'll be great, see? Can you play that thing? All right, come on in. Now, you on. said you were really but, into yeah. the military. So what, what ended up changing your mind? Like what? You know, you said that was something that you were really getting into. I, so what I made think you I was getting more back. I always, Did your dad always, serve? Yes. Okay. Yes, he was in the Army. Yeah. So there was influence, a little bit of influence sure. there. You know, but um, I... Well, what about it did you like, if you don't mind me asking? With the military? Yeah. Oh, man, it's, it's just like a job. A lot of people have a misconception of the military thinking that, that oh, you're going to go to war, and it's like you got to get the buzz cut, and <laughs> you can't go facial hair and all this, all this crap. Yeah, you got to travel a lot, too, with the Navy in particular, I, think, um, right? I mean, right? Depending on what you do. That's the thing. There's so much gray area. Depending yeah. on what, I was never on a ship. I was never on the ship being in the Navy. You're just always at a base? Yeah, right? I was always at okay. a base, you know, so, I mean. So you just like the idea of, like, working, like, serving, like, your fellow? Yeah, I, well, like, like I said, I, I was going to do the whole Navy SEAL thing, and then that kind of fell through. Did you get you know? to test so, for that? Did you yeah, get to, did, I, did, okay. I did test for that, yeah. I had a friend I, who was who did it as well, and he didn't, he also didn't, right. he didn't work. It was, I mean, I, you know, I don't have to tell you, but, like, you know, <laughs> the story was like, and I, I, you can't even imagine how difficult it is, and, uh-huh. and I can't personally. But well, I, I didn't. I didn't even get to. The, I just got for the physical. I didn't even right. make it to right. like that, same thing any for of that. Yeah, yeah, I mean that in itself can be because they they're poking and prodding you for every little thing. Yep. To make sure you're you're tip top. So this, <laughs> what made mental you want to? Oh yeah. And, you know, right? Oh wow, we're already that done. is. I know that, that is wow. the end. <laughs> Talking about the military of the interview portion <laughs> of the interview. <laughs> the interview portion of the interview. The interview portion of the interview. <laughs> oh. Well. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was like, come yeah. on, you're late. You're late on that. Come on, man. I was swinging it. <laughs> it, was at, it was on the two. That was a long swing. That was a long swing. <laughs> that was a golf swing. That's what's called a strike. 
<laughs> well, Alex, man, it was a lot of fun having you up here, getting to know you. Thanks, man. Do you Thanks, have man. Uh, a second piece that you want to try for us here? Um, yeah, sure, sure. I got something for you. Like he, like he thought about it, like he wasn't sure if he was going to do it. <laughs> You're like, oh, come on, man. Don't leave me hanging. It's like, well, I guess I could. I guess I'm going to have to make Alex pick up one of those electric guitars and play something here. I got a, <laughs> I got a timpani back here I'm going to bang on. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what you got, Alex? What is this, by the way? This is uh, Autumn Leaves. Oh, dad's standing here. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh. Hey, what was the name of the first thing you played? Uh, that's that's the little original tune I'm working on. It doesn't really really yeah yeah I'm working on I'm working on some stuff here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> forgot about the mic here. Uh, yeah, working on some original stuff because I've been playing a lot of everybody else's stuff, and it's time yeah. and it's time for me to I come would, up with some I, of my stuff. That first <laughs> one you did I liked too because it, 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 it I I heard like vocal ranges in like almost almost loungy in a way yeah. a little bit at, at certain points when it went in, you did a little major just like r runs up and yeah yeah, right? yeah 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 killer thanks <laughs> it was, I got I got one I got a fan over it was here. it right. was it was pretty sweet I can't wait to hear some Ellis <laughs> Wright originals you are in quite a few bands yes 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 and you know since you had very short songs one more question I do want to ask is how did you finally come across Chicago Street because all of a sudden oh yeah yeah you asked that scene. earlier yeah yeah you blew up on the scene you've been playing with everybody ever since like you're on <laughs> stage every time I'm in the place you know like I remember one specific time and I, I don't know if this is the whole catalyst for it but I remember it was a Halloween show that goes on here that happens here every year where best all, all the musicians we dress up as other musicians yeah yeah all, you know they, they come here and they dress up like other musicians and they have a great ass time, and uh, I, I was and sometimes other musicians from the scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, Pat you know? Otto. That was <laughs> <laughs> our friend John Hamilton dressed up as Pat Otto. Pat Otto. I thought it was him in that earlier. picture. I thought for sure it, it was actually looked Pat Otto. like him. He, they were roommates at one time, and he left like, a couple like he left a shirt behind or something like that. So and a hat. This guy clear, walked too. up with a hat, like the, the signature Pat Otto hat, which you can see <laughs> yeah, yeah. On, on the photo of the Pat and Bridget episode. You can see the way Pat is dressed. He has like the same kind of like cowboy shirt, jeans, a hat, and he's always got his mandolin. And this dude walked up with Pat's ex girlfriend. Jeez, <laughs> and oh I'm like, man! I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm like, what's going on with with Pat's like current girlfriend? And I could not funny. tell until he walked up that it was John Hamilton. <laughs> so speaking of the Halloween show, the oh, best time ever. Yeah, yeah. Show it was packed in in here downstairs, and uh, I was like, man, this is cool. I'm gonna start coming out here more often, and I think the rest is history. I mean, you know, the jams that go on here, it's like every night there's something going on here. Yeah. You know, you know it's, it's like, it's, it's crazy, you know? It's funny because you said you're like, you're like, you, I don't remember word for word, but you were, you mentioned it was sort of hard to be sure that that's how it was the first time, which I think is funny because I feel like most people that I've talked to, including myself, <laughs> yeah. if you ask me, how did you come here? I'm like, you know, I know about how long ago it was, but I don't remember exactly <laughs> when. Gravitated. It's a because process. Yeah, right. You're just so familiar with everything that happens now after you kind of start coming here that everything kind of feels like it's just been a week. Right. Even, it's <laughs> right, been seven right. years or eight exactly. years or five years exactly. or whatever it is. But it feels like you've, you've just kind of been around. It's like coming to somebody's house right. and hanging out with your friends and and it's never uncomfortable, and you never have to deal with shit. Usually speaking, except for that one time. It was like yeah, very, very <laughs> small amount of times. Uh, <clears throat> we actually met well. <laughs> so with all that in mind, 
I would like to thank Mike and Kathy Trisna for everything they do. Yes. Indeed. To give us a place to go to Indeed. keep meeting all these cool people and great musicians and and uh, and great fans too. Honestly, without all the people that come out and watch all the shows, we do have some regular fans that come to everybody's show mm-hmm. all the time, and it's really cool. And they do listen. They pay attention. They know everybody's name. They know the names of the songs. You get that kind of genuine feedback that only someone who was listening would actually be able to give you. You get bands coming here to cover other bands from Joliet. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we <laughs> that's, how, that's how cool this place is. It's a testament for what it is. And I'd like to thank Bill Alderich for letting us use his studio time and again. Thanks, Bill. To- Willie Vanilli. Willie Thanks, Vanilli. Bill. Oh, Indeed. man, that's the best nickname I've <laughs> really He is Billy. forever going to be Willie Vanilli the Vaudevilli. <laughs> <laughs> Holy God, Dave, that's it's gold. Stuck. Oh. It's stuck. And thank He's you, Dave, for it. all the work you always do to help us out with this David show, too. Super Francis. Dave. Yeah. Mixing, mastering, the miking. What was the comment? The master of all minor media. <laughs> 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 if it's irrelevant, I might have a hand in it. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the third floor of a building. Yes. <laughs> you're probably in there involved. Yes. It's on <laughs> the third floor. <laughs> so, from Third City Sound in downtown Joliet, Thank you, Ellis. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Cheers. And this has been What's Going Down in Downtown J-Town. Downtown.